Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Lush Foliage. In today's video, we are going to be talking about an extremely beautiful plant called as the Euphorbia cottony folia. Now guys, even though the name says as Euphorbia, but its requirements and the growing conditions are completely different of a succulent. This plant is native to South America and Mexico. Usually this plant tends to grow as a shrub. The plant type is a shrub. But if it's given a good growing conditions outdoor in ground, this plant can even reach to 30 feet and grow like a tree. Now let's talk a little bit in detail about this plant because there's going to be a little bit of confusion related with this plant because of its name. Now basically it's from the family of Euphorbiae but uh, the conditions that it grows in is completely different. Let's start with the light. Now guys this plant prefers a good amount of light be it in the form of direct sunlight or dappled sunlight or indirect bright light. Please do not keep this plant in shade. Please do not keep this plant in a dark place or in low light conditions the plant will not do quite well you can see my plant is very young but it's starting to put out a lot of new growth i offer it a good amount of indirect bright light or filtered light because my plant is relatively very young at this point of time but as and when the plant tends to mature you can give it a good amount of morning direct sunlight for five to six hours do not keep it in a shaded place the plant will not do quite well now talking about the soil requirements, I use the same type of soil mix but I do a little bit of amendment in the soil. The soil has to be loose, porous, well draining and should be a little bit less in organic material. Apart from that, the coco peat, the amount of coco peat that I'm using for this plant is also slightly less, probably only 10% but the major quantity is garden soil, sand and perlite. Sand is going to make the soil well draining and perlite is going to make the soil airy because this plant needs a well draining soil. It cannot be sitting in a soggy wet soil otherwise the roots will get rotted. Now talking about watering again another important thing even though this is called as the euphorbia or from the family of euphorbiae it does not like to be in dry soil for a longer period of time. It is not a drought tolerant plant like the other euphorbias or succulents. A lot of succulents are drought tolerant but this plant isn't. So you have to check that the soil is completely bone dry before you go ahead and water it. During summers the watering is going to be a little bit more frequent because the soil tends to dry faster. During winters you'll have to cut down on the watering because during winters the plant tends to go into a partial dormancy. Not a complete dormancy but it tends to slow down its growth. So during winters try and reduce your watering. Uh, probably you can wait for a couple of days after the soil has been completely bone dry. But during summers, increase the frequency of watering. Again, the soil has to be completely dry. Do not wait for a very long time after the soil has been completely bone dry because as I said, this plant is not drought tolerant. It will start to dry out. So according to your environment and climate and how soon the soil tends to dry, you can go ahead and water it during the summers. Now again, please do not water it every day or every alternate day. Let the soil dry out completely. Otherwise, you will end up overwatering this plant. Now talking about the dormancy and non-dormancy, as I said, this plant tends to go dormant during the winters and summer is their growing period. If you want to add any fertilizers, you can do that. You can go with any liquid based fertilizer weaken the strength of the fertilizer and add it either once a month or once in two months during the warmer months or the summer months. During winters, please don't add any fertilizers. Talking about propagation, it's very easy to propagate this plant. You can do it via stem cutting or you can even grow it with seeds. When this plant tends to get mature, it will get seeds and those seeds will automatically fall into the soil and you will get a new plant. But that is going to take a very long time. So the best method is you can do a stem cutting. But guys, you have to be extremely careful. It is a euphorbia. There is going to be a lot of sap or plant milk. If you have sensitive skin, then please use gloves because if the plant milk comes in contact with your skin and if you you have delicate skin it can irritate or it can even leave a rash or allergic reaction to your skin so you have to be extremely careful whenever you are cutting it ensure that you are having gloves it can be easily propagated via stem cuttings now talking about pest issues yes this plant does get affected with pests uh, especially mealybugs or spider mites they will usually be underneath the leaves so always 
Turn the leaves and check if there are any insects. If there are, you can use for any organic solution that you have been using all this while. Apart from that, if you're going to keep this plant in less light and if you're going to water it more frequently, then this plant can easily get powdery mildew. So you have to be extremely careful. Talking about temperature and humidity, uh, again, there is going to be a little bit of difference from the regular euphorbias that we have. This plant prefers a warmer temperature. That's why it tends to put out growth during the summers and during the winters, it tends to go into a partial dormancy because this plant does not like cold weather. It is not frost hardy. If you are from a place wherein the temperatures are very extremely cold during the winters, then you'll have to get this plant indoor because it will not be able to handle frost. Apart from that, this plant prefers a slightly higher humidity, warmer temperature and higher humidity. Something that is very different from our succulents. Our succulents prefer a very dry environment, but this one prefers a little bit higher humidity. So what you can do is you can club other plants around it so that it can increase the humidity. What I have noticed is it will do quite well in average humidity as well. But if you are from a very extremely dry environment, then you'll have to keep this thing in mind because they do not like cold and dry environment. The most important question, is this plant toxic? Yes, this plant is toxic. So ensure that you're keeping this plant away from the reach of small children and pets because if the leaves are ingested, it can lead to trouble. So you have to be extremely careful. Apart from that, as I said, when you are propagating or doing a stem cutting, the plant will have sap or the plant milk, which is also quite toxic. So you have to ensure that you wear gloves, especially for people who have sensitive skin. If the sap or the plant milk will come in contact with your skin it will leave a rash or it will irritate your skin so you have to be extremely careful be very careful uh, do not let that sap or plant milk come in contact with your eyes because that can again lead to another problem so you have to be extremely careful so if you're growing this plant indoor ensure that it's kept at a height or in a, a higher shelf so that uh, small kids or pets do not go around to this plant because the leaves are very attractive and easily small kids or pets can break it and when you tend to break, there is going to be sap as well as the leaves ingested can be quite dangerous. But if you're going to keep all of these things in mind and keep the plant at a safe distance, it's very easy and it's a very beautiful plant. Uh, it can be grown indoor, it can be grown outdoor, provided you give all of these basic care requirements. So guys, that's all about it. I hope that this video was helpful to you. If it was, please hit the like button. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing to it. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep planting.